And that's when I said, well, that's not a whale. That's my whoa, whoa, geez Louise, kid. Can't you see I'm a little busy here? I mean, Q4 is right around the corner. It could be stalking us right now, listening to this here conversation. So why don't you skedaddle? Beat it, you bum. Oh, you're done playing with baseball cards, huh? And you want to learn how to make a big league salary? Well, my friend, then you need to know the way of the land when it comes to your product page. So I've made a ton of videos recently about the product page from how to write descriptions that don't suck, which you can check out over here, and split tests that you can do to increase your conversion rate. But in this video, I wanna do a full complete breakdown of the product page, because there is so many ways that you can make or break, have a winning product, or have a product that is a winner, but because your product page just sucks, it will never shine through. So I want you to avoid that mistake and know the essentials everything you need to know to have an amazing product page. Now, the first decision you're going to have to make with your product page is what theme are you going to use? Now, there are plenty of free themes out there that Shopify offered that are great, like Sense and Dawn for selling non-problem solving products. But for me, I look for a theme where I know I can really customize the layout, the feel. I can add things that I would personally need an app for if I was using other themes. Now, the one I've settled on is Solo Drop because you can do so many things from customizing the text, the feel, the layout. And I built this entire website right here using it you can have the buy now it just looks so clean and professional and the speed score is it's beautiful and that's what you want when you are selling on TikTok. where if something doesn't load in seconds you're not going to get the sale so right here we can see in this first section this is the above the full we got the product details we got a good product title it's looking nice and schmexy we can do a social badge oof TikTok as seen on TikTok. So all of our images, and this is something that you would have to do in Canva to have a graphic like this, but it's already baked into the theme. I mean, it's so freaking cool. So you can have color swatches or you can have normal. I love having images as the color swatches. I think that's the best way you can have it. You can do a promotion message like sale ending soon. And I know there's another brand that I actually recently bought from that has something very similar and they have a limited supply. So you can definitely change around the wording and have urgency. And that's something we'll talk about a little bit later on. But with this theme, it is just so amazing the things you can do so let's do limited supply you can customize the colors on basically everything so this is a lipstick product so it's more pink red you know the vibes and we can see right here so i can customize this make it black for this section and look at that it totally changes but again it's a gradient so it's a mix of both which is really really cool the add to cart we can play around with it also has a great animation for when people do add to cart to incentivize them to buy more now another reason why i believe solo drop is the best theme out there is the way that you can customize the feel of your descriptions. I mean, look at this layout right here. We got a GIF on the right. It's looking so nice. We got images. We got short, great headlines that stand out. The text looks great. And this Get Yours Today, this is a cool gradient banner that is super easy to customize. So I can add any words. I could literally do Ligma and it just looks so nice. I mean, look at that. And it integrates with most review apps. So I personally use LAI Reviews because it's really easy to import reviews from Amazon. So as you can see right here, this is a great concept. This makeup kit looks so freaking professional professional and the layout man so let's take a look on mobile for this because again it is on desktop so you can see oof super short to the point that ligma right there that's when it's going to get people to buy now real quick before i move on to my next point if you do want to work with a team of experts at my agency blue ocean digital to create amazing websites like this one right here find unique products and also create custom ads with our new team of custom influencers then i would love for you to book a call down below to learn more about what we offer and see if it's the right fit for you to help you scale your first or next drop shipping product so if you are selling on shopify i would highly recommend limiting your app usage because your speed score will get impacted by all that extra code because people are going to be on TikTok. They'll see your ad and they're used to fast speed. They're seeing videos every couple seconds about how Lil Huddy unfollowed the D'Amelio family. I mean, it's a big deal. So when they click onto your product page, it needs to load instantly. Otherwise, they're going to keep on swiping. So if you want to have something like a sticky ad to cart or a little headline banner about free shipping, your theme, if you pick the right one, should automatically have that. Daybeautify has that with Solo Drop. I can go into my settings, go to sticky ad to cart, enable it or disable it depending on what split test I'm doing. I can have my buttons go straight to checkout. And these are all things that most gem pages or custom page builders have, but a lot of themes don't. But if you pick the right one, you can have great speed score and you're increasing your conversion rate as well. Now, one of the most underrated elements of a product page is the images that you choose or decide not to choose when you're selling to your customers because visuals sell, graphics sell. If you can illustrate the main benefits of your product in an image, it converts so much better than variety 
grinding it out and having people read because people honestly they hate reading no one likes reading so when you are picking those images let's say we're selling this hair extension product right here if we only have these white background photos or photos on mannequins and these are the typical drop shipper images that people will just say all right these are good enough it isn't going to do a good job of selling your product. Your conversion rate will be lower compared to if you put in the extra work. You go and look at reviews and you can actually find real people wearing the product. Because when you're making that buying decision, that's a big part of it. You're trying to visualize how this will look on you by seeing how it looks on other people. It's the bandwagon effect as well. When you see other people wearing a product or wearing a hat or wearing clothing that looks really good on them, you wanna buy it for yourself because you wanna have that same sort of feel. So if I'm buying this hat, for instance, and I only saw this one image, I would have trouble picturing what it looks like on me. But thankfully this brand knows, all right, we need to have a model wearing it, having a good clothing item under it so that we can really sell how stylish this hat is. And most brands go even deeper than that. When you go down to the description, you can see a GIF of someone wearing this product, easily installing it. It looks so good. So you see overwhelming amounts of people. So you can really picture how this will look on you, which is great. So all these GIFs, all these images, and I love, 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 love using GIFs to demonstrate demonstrate how the product is easy to use, just demonstrating how to use it in general and how it will look on you because those are such great visuals. But the one thing though, when you are doing your images is don't overdo the GIFs and large size images because that will lower your speed score as well. So you want to do a good job of compressing the images and not using too many GIFs. And then finally, just this little detail right here. Why Juva Bun? This is such a great graphic that a lot of big brands do. They always will compare it to other competitors, especially when it's a product that people already know there's alternatives to it. So if I'm selling a water bottle, people know there's a million different water balls out there. So why would you choose my water bottle? It gives you the same solution as all the other ones, but is there some cool benefit of it? Is it just the design of it? What is going to be your USP, your unique selling proposition? So with Juva Bun, they do it right here, secured and tight fit. Okay. So everyone can do that, but does it look like your real hair? Well, eh, the other competitors, not so much. Ours, 100 hundred percent. Is it affordable? The number one choice, so many great benefits. And you might have to think outside the box, but you can create a graphic like this in Canva in two seconds. And it does make a big difference. Now, the thing you should be split testing the most when doing e-commerce is your offer, because the first price you're going to come up with your product is never going to be the most optimal until you split test and have the data. So for me, whenever I'm selling a product, so let's say this smart massager, sure, this can be a good opening offer just to test the waters a little bit, 50% off. I would say it's a bit generic, but if you know that you're getting sales, the next step should always be seeing, okay, what happens to my conversion rate when I lower the price by $5? What happens when I raise it by $10? Can I get away with charging $10 more and my conversion rate remains the same? Because if so, my AOV is higher. I can spend more to acquire a customer. There's so many good solutions out there and you should try different offer structures. And I would say the most impactful offer I've ever seen, this is the most famous one, is Fabletics two for $24 shorts. I can guarantee this was not the first offer they put out into the market. They might've did two for 29, two for 34, but after a ton of split testing, they realized this is the best offer. So you might have to do something that's like a BOGO, buy one, get one free or buy one, get two free. Or if you look at Black Wolf, this is one of the best e-commerce offers I've seen because they realize their product is so good that they can break even or lose money to acquire a customer because they realize people, once they sign up, they're gonna be hooked for life. So with Black Wolf, what they do do is they have you trial out their best products, $53 of value for only $5. It's a no brainer offer. And if you can create a no brainer offer for people, and again, when you're dropshipping, it can be hard. So the only way you can really create offers that are that enticing is you got to have a great private supplier. You got to have good sourcing agents for whatever product you're selling. So if I'm selling the smart massager and everyone else is sourcing it for $30, so they have to sell it for 60, 70 to match the margins. If I can find a great private supplier that can get this for me for 10 15 i can lower my price so again i can make it super hard for anyone else to compete with me and i can come up with more enticing offers i could do buy one get one free for 70 dollars while everyone else has to just do one for 70 because at the end of the day i'm still making 40 dollars on that sale but the perceived value is so much higher so when you are split testing your offer what i would recommend doing is give it at least a week because if you only split test your offer or any change to your product page frankly for a day or two the day are very, very impactful because you can do a split test on Friday, which is 
typically one of the best days for e-commerce and your conversion rate is going up and you'll attribute that falsely to that split test or that change you made when really it's because it's a Friday. But if you make a split test on a Monday and it doesn't go well, you're going to blame it on that split test compared to no one really buys things on Mondays. So if you change your price and you split test it for at least a week, you can get a good amount of data as to, okay, is my conversion rate going up or down? Is my AOV going up or down? Depending on that change. And if you only change one thing at a time, that's when you can really attribute the change to it. But if you change your whole entire product layout or the colors or multiple variables, you can't really do so. Now, another important element of the product page is having some urgency or scarcity, especially when you're a smaller brand, because you'll notice that the big boy brands, they don't really have any urgency because they realize people are already knowing them as the market leader. But when you're brand new, you have to get people to make a decision today and not just add to cart and wait one week and maybe I'll buy it. It was all right, I guess. But if you give people a reason to buy today saying something like hey we are having a limited amount of stock available so get it now before it's too late or doing some sort of countdown timer i've done this on multiple brands to get four or five percent conversion rates and i know it might seem cheesy to you however i have split tested it i've split tested different countdown timers some lower your conversion rate some increase your conversion rate typically based on how the design is you can have text like sale ending soon 35 percent off you could again the main things you can really play around with is saying that a sale is going to end soon or that you're about to run out of inventory those are the main two levers that you can play around with again going back to uh, that website example that we saw you can see right here that culture kings does the limited supply and they even do five sold recently to give you more urgency in a way because you know these are flying off the shelves maybe you will run out if you don't order soon so again many different ways you can convey urgency countdown timers limited supply having said that oh 20 people are viewing this right now again big brands do do that but it's all about the design and the way that you implement it. Now, social proof can absolutely make or break that decision of someone buying on your product or going to somebody else instead. So I would recommend mixing around where you have your social proof from having it at the above the fold section of right when someone clicks into your website, they can see, oh my God, 7,000 five-star reviews. That is pretty impressive. And another thing that a lot of big brands love to do, and I love doing this as well, is having a review nearly at the top of your description. So having this customer, Lisa, not exaggerating when I say this is the absolute best product I've ever used. Used. I would say that's a little bit generic, but it's a great way of mixing and having social proof everywhere. We can see right here also, after one line of benefits, we have a verified buyer right here showing out the product. Going all the way down, we have the reviews as well, which typically I would say 20% of people actually see. So you should throughout your description, throughout your product page, have multiple ways of showing that there is people that are buying this and they're absolutely loving your product. And there are other ways of having social proof. You can have an influencer in one of your gifts in your description that looks natural, that looks real, that looks authentic using your product and just smiling and loving it. And you could just tell that they know they made a great purchase decision. So that reinforces the decision for your customer to also make the same decision as well. So again, going down here, I mean, there's so much great social proof, but you don't want the gifts to be too ad sales like I would say this one I would say feels a little bit ad sales like so you want to find the most authentic clips from TikTok or get your influencers that you are working with to try to make it seem authentic and obviously the way that you display your reviews is going to matter as well so you should have a review app that really does display the photos that your customers are providing in the best possible way because there's some review apps that honestly just don't look great I would say this one Eh, let's see on mobile, honestly, because I don't want to judge too harshly. I would say this layout, yep, works pretty well. It shows a good amount of reviews. Again, LAI, if we go back to our website, we like to do more of a top down and use black stars. I've just noticed the yellow feels a little bit cheesier. So having black looks really nice. So this is the layout I personally like doing. But again, with everything that you do, if you do execute it at a high level, it typically will work for you. And if you do it in a cheesy half ass way, yeah, your conversion rate's not going to be great. Now let's talk about above the fold, the section that 100% of your customers are going to see. Now I have a whole video that is dedicated to conversion rate optimization and above the fold split test that you can do. And what are the most important things you should have on there? So I would highly recommend watching that video if you want to learn more about improving your websites, but let's get into it. Now with your product page, the above the fold is the money section. This is where a 
hundred percent of your customers are going to be when they click onto your link. And even when you scroll down slightly to recently viewed, I would say 80 to 70% of people actually make it that far down. But in this section that hundred percent of people can see, what is the most important information you want to have? Well, you want to have great product images that are well optimized. You want your website to load fast. You want to have the product price, product title, and a way for people to get to the next step of your funnel, which is your add to cart and buy now buttons. So with blenders, I think they have the most optimized above the fold. They have great images. It has all the most important information all in one. And when you look at other brands like Allbirds right here, you can see the images. They have made a self-conscious decision to make their images very big. And again, lower it a little bit. I mean, that's a slight scroll down to get into the add to cart. That is really pretty solid to have great images, the title, all the color variants all in one. So it's super optimized. There's not a lot of empty space with high smile. They have an add to cart button that instantly appears. So you can see, all right, I got the price, got the images, got everything here, and I can click add to cart straight from loading in, which is amazing. And then with the solo drop theme, I would say with ours, we can definitely optimize it a little bit because there is some empty space right here. So if we did bump up the images, I feel like we would have gotten all the most important information, but quick scroll down, we can click the color, add to cart, not too shabby either to have the product title, price, sale ending soon, have the free shipping, all of that in one. So it might be hard to throw in everything, but you wanna try to make it nice and neat but the more information you can get in above the fold is obviously the best so when we compare the above the fold of an optimized e-commerce brand versus a typical crappy dropshipping website i mean let's see the differences so with blenders again they have their image product title price add to cart all in one so i can go to the next step from loading into their website but with most dropshipping websites i mean we see we got a giant product image that i don't feel like needs to be this big then we have product thumbnails which yes it's normal but i think we can make these definitely smaller and and you get a product title and a very, very small price. I would increase the font because it is very hard to read that. And you scroll down, yes, there's an ads card, but with blenders, they have buy with Google Pay. They make it so easy for you to move on to the next step and buy. They also have after pay. And that's another thing. If you can limit the amount of restrictions, the amount of friction for people to buy, and Amazon's a great example of this, it's two clicks and you buy, you will increase your conversion rate immediately. Now let's get into descriptions because I have a whole video that already talks about my templates and I write a live description for you, which I would recommend checking out if you want to learn more. But when it comes to descriptions, what's the point of a description? It's to convey the main benefits of your product and sell people on why they need your product in as few words as possible. So when we look at this dropshipping brand right here, let's analyze the description. Does it convey why we need this product, the major talking points, what problems we have, all the most important details in as few words as possible. All right, so they got some bullet point benefits, which I love. I love condensing that information of the main things because most people are gonna read this and when it comes to the description, they'll probably skip by this. All right, I'll read a headline or two and that's it. All right, premium sound quality, cool. Am I gonna read all this? Probably not. So you really wanna make sure your headlines have that condensed important benefits because that's really what most people are just gonna read anyways. Yeah, I don't know about you, but personally, I would probably just keep this to try risk-free for 30 days. Like this extra words, I don't think people are really gonna read. Now enjoy a deeper, more comfortable sleep. Awesome benefit. Let's scroll down. All right, we got a graphic that explains the benefits. That's cool with me. Now, all these extra words. I mean, I like that they have images that do break down so that you don't have a, just a block of text in a row. So you do have some, a little bit of separators. But scrolling down, I would say there's, yeah, definitely a bunch of text on here that I don't think most people are gonna read. It's good that they have an FAQ section because that's definitely important for any dropshipping product, any e-commerce product in general. There's always gonna be questions. If you look at Amazon, there's a reason why they have a frequently asked questions section because there's always gonna be something that someone's gonna wanna know an objection before they buy. They also have a video in here, which I think is great. I have noticed more e-commerce brands leaning towards videos to explain their product. But personally, I feel like eh, we can maybe get rid of one or two sections to really narrow it down. But that's the whole point of your description, trying to keep it short and simple to the point. And that's something that I have had trouble with for a while. I mean, even if you look at my My Slim Waist description, that did do very well. It is quite long. So personally, what we're leaning towards at my agency is just keeping things very short. We like to do three sections for when we're doing our descriptions, but keep it to two to three sentences max. Keep those sentences short as well. So we can see one pencil, all the best lipstick shades. That's the major benefit, keeping it short, simple. All right, cool. Keep your purse organized and your lipstick at hand's reach. Awesome. Gorgeous gift for your bestie at any occasion. 
pretty simple copy. And when you are doing ads on TikTok, I mean, that's really all you need to know. I mean, it's very simple. Now, obviously with problem solving products, yes, you're gonna have to put a little more thought into it, probably have a few more sentences, but with most drop shipping products, keeping it short, figuring out what are those major benefits, doing the research, going and reading reviews, seeing what people are saying over and over and over again is the reason why they bought, is typically the best approach to writing effective headlines and just making sure you don't talk about features and that you talk about benefits. And a lot of times that means you've got to write out the feature and why does it actually matter to you? So I definitely recommend when you're writing your descriptions, have a template that you always use. I know for me personally, I do discuss that in that description video. I mean, why haven't you checked it out by now? Haven't you realize this whole video, the whole point of me filming this was to promote my other videos to you. It's like a multi-level marketing scheme, but for YouTube videos and getting you to learn more. But again, you should have a template. I would recommend headline, two sentences, second headline, which is usually the major benefits. You want to have it in order of which benefit is the most important. So your first headline will be the most important. Second headline is the second most important, third headline, third most important, and then two sections underneath each headline. And you want an image that separates all three sections so it's not too many words. And it depends, but when it comes to those sentences, I like to have a sentence that shows a specific scenario in which you'll use the product so that people can imagine it. I also like to talk about what's in it for me. That's the most important thing I think about when I'm writing my copy. What is in it for me when I'm reading these lines? What do I get? What's the benefit? Why does this make me want to buy the product. And the final step to creating a profitable product page is realizing that your product page, your website is a funnel. It's not just a product page that people land on. There's a cart page. There's a checkout page. Do you have free shipping? Do you have trust badges on your checkout page to really give people that extra trust and authority to make that buying decision and trust you? After someone purchases, what happens? What does that page look like? If you're well optimized and you're trying to focus on increasing your AOV so that you can spend more to acquire a customer, you should have something like one click upsell where you are upselling the same product at a higher discount or upselling a complimentary product. The best Best brands know when someone buys, you have to maximize that opportunity. It doesn't happen every single day. It might be once a month or once a year that you buy from this brand. So we have to try to squeeze out as much money as possible. And you can split test this by doing your upsell offers after someone clicks at to car, or you can do it after someone purchases. Personally, for me, I like after someone purchases because when you do have an upsell after someone clicks the add to car, it adds more friction. It adds an extra step, it slows down the process, and that will lower your conversion rate. But if it does increase your AOV, you want to split test it and see if that does make you more money.